In this video, we'll see how you can deal with legacy text. And legacy text is any text that's in a document that was created in a version prior to the one you're using. So in my case, I'm using Illustrator CS6, but I might open a file that was created in CS2. It gets a little trickier when you're opening files that were created by even earlier versions, say Illustrator 8, because Adobe completely redid the text engine back with version 10. Now, Illustrator 10 came out way back in 2001, but you still may come across some files that have been back saved to that version. All the major stock sites still require that their vector files be saved in version 10, for example, so that people who are using older versions of Illustrator can open them. Some people may not even use Illustrator at all. For example, Freehand and CorelDRAW can save files to legacy Illustrator versions and can open Illustrator 10 files. So that's a case where you might come across an Illustrator file that was saved in a really old version. So to simulate that, I'm going to save this back to Illustrator 8. And I'll call it something else so I don't get it confused with this document. I'll click Save, and right now I'm on Illustrator CS6, but I'm going to save it all the way down to version 8. And you always get a warning when you do this because some of the newer features aren't compatible with the older versions. I'll go ahead and click OK, and Illustrator warns me yet again that saving this document in an older format might cause me some problems. Specifically, the type might convert to point type. So if I had some area type in this document, it might all get converted to point type. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and now I'll close it and reopen it. And now you can see that even the icon looks a little different. It looks like the Illustrator 8 icon. So I'll go ahead and open this, and now I get another warning. And this message is specifically warning me about text. This is telling me that I have legacy text in my file, and that it must be updated before I can edit it. But I don't have to update it. If I wanted to update it, I can just click Update. Or if I want to leave it alone and open the file anyway, I can click OK. Or I can click Cancel and not open it at all. And I'm going to click OK, which is going to open it, but not update the text. Now if I select this text, you can see it looks a little different. And I'll open my Appearance panel, and we see that we have a group here, and inside that group is a legacy text object. Now if I were just opening this to print it, I really don't have to do anything. It'll print fine, and it'll look exactly like this. And if I don't need to edit the text, this is all I need to do. But if I do want to update the text at this point, I'll go up to the Type menu and choose Legacy Text, and I can update all of the legacy text or just the selected text in my document, and that's what I'll do. And now you can see that I have a single point type object, which is totally editable. I mentioned earlier that you can use unupdated legacy text if you're just going to print the file and you want the appearance to remain the same. Well, there's a second option if you want to edit the text, but make sure it looks like the original author had intended. So here I have a legacy type object, and if I take my type tool and click on it to try to edit it, I get this warning. And what this is telling me is that I can copy this text object and use it as a reference object. So Illustrator will create a new text object that I can edit, but I'll still have the original one to look at for reference to make sure that everything looks the same. So I'm going to click to copy the text object. And now you can see that I can edit this text object, but behind it is the original as a sort of template. If I go over to my Layers panel, you can see that this bottom layer here is the original legacy type object, and it's locked and has an appearance attribute. It has some lower opacity on it, so I can use that to reference if I wanted to edit this new copy. And let's say I've made some edits, and it looks exactly like the original version. I could go back up to the Legacy Text menu and choose to delete that copy. Sometimes when you update legacy text in a file, it doesn't always go so smoothly. I'm going to open a second file that I have and choose to update the legacy text. Now you can see what has happened here is that it's turned into individual point type. There's just about one character per point type object. And, you know, nobody would type something like this normally. So, as you can imagine, this can be a huge hassle to edit, but there is a trick to fix it. I have all of these point type objects selected with my Direct Selection tool, and then I'm going to copy, and then switch to my Type tool, click once to create a point type object, and paste. And now I have a single point type object with all of those characters where they should be. Thank you for watching this course. I hope you have a better understanding of how text works inside of Illustrator. And once you become more adept at working with type in Illustrator, 
It's easy to translate those skills to other Adobe programs that share the same text engine. For further reference, check out the Tuts Premium courses Working with Text in Photoshop and Typography Projects in InDesign.